Hello and welcome, this is Cryptos Chain with a new episode of Simple Cryptocurrency Reviews and it's time to review another project on the NEO blockchain. This project is called The Key, I've been meaning to review it for a while, there's quite a lot to go into, so I'm going to do it now and you're going to find this really really interesting. I have been interested in this project myself for quite some time, I have followed their progress closely to see how they're doing and because they're very very close in launching their product, we're talking next month in December, it's time to review it and go in details. Now, so as we can see on CoinMarketCap, right, the key has the ticker symbol TKY, they're on the NEO blockchain as an NEP5 token. Now the current price is trading at around fourth of a cent, okay, it's been up 8.7% in the last 24 hours. The total supply is 9.7 billion, okay, so that's quite a lot, but I'll explain why in a moment. And the circulating supply is 5 billion. Now where can you purchase it? It can be bought on multiple exchanges such as the centralized exchange Qcoin, LBank, BitZ and of course the decentralized exchange Switcho network. Now let's get right into their website, the key. Now what is the key all about? It's about identity, right? Identity for the future. Now they're a decentralized ecosystem over an identity verification tool using the national big data and blockchain. Now to read a little bit about them, so the key project team is now developing an identification verification, which is called IDV tool, with a blockchain based dynamic multi-dimension identification BDMI by using personally identifiable information which is exclusively authorized by government authorities, right? This is the key point here, this is what we need to keep in mind. So these guys are compliant and they're compliant with the Chinese government which you know are quite strict when it comes to compliance. Now the key is a decentralized ecosystem of identity verification tool using the national big data and blockchain. Now what are the differences and advantages? So by leveraging governments, PIA and blockchain technology, in addition that the results generated from our IDV is neither denied nor altered. So there are three undisputable advantages comparing to other existing IDV products. Now more reliable results, so the supporting data is gathered in real time and is comprehensive, accurate and reliable. The data is also validated in advance by government agencies or other public institutions. Then of course lower costs, so full use of existing data sources, avoidance of duplicate work for data collection and processing and authentication. They also offer a better user experience, so it is not necessary for individual users to install any application or upload any information. Okay, because they've already got the details. Now what achievements have they got? Now, this is a really important one and I think this is great for investors. Of course, people that have already invested in this space, people that are thinking of investing, again, this is not financial advice, I'm covering this project to expose all the information that we've got for it so you can make the best decision possible. Now, 23 copyrights have been obtained, 15 patents have been accepted by SIPO, State Intellectual Property Office of the PRC and start at the station process. Now the key's first generation IDV solution is currently in use for mobile social insurance pay in three pilot cities, which people can receive their payment to their, for their pension or healthcare insurance reimbursement. Now the IDV solution is currently being deployed in another 41 cities covering more than 130 million people. Okay, this is a lot of people folks, a lot of people. Now, is personal identity data of 210 million people in 66 cities, authenticated by the relevant government authorities, are connected on a real-time basis. This constitutes a solid foundation of IDV. Commercial contracts signed with world leading firms and the business model of our IDV products in this white paper has already been partly proven. Then you've got the six relevant national laboratories that have been set up together with government agencies, banks, insurance companies and one university. You've got the most commercial valuable project of the year 2017 All China Women's Federation, that's what they've won, they won an award for that. Then Catherine, who is the CEO of the key, is awarded as the most outstanding woman entrepreneur in China and 10 most influential Chinese women of the year. She won a federation award in 2017 and she won a national award in terms of technology innovation. 
for the Chinese government's information product, China International Big Data Industry Expo 2018. And research into social insurance blockchain applications have been jointly established by the Information Center of the Ministry of Human Resources and Social Security, the China Social Security Association and the key. Now research into national group purchasing of healthcare resources platform has been jointly by the China Association of Social Security, the Social Media Insur Social Medical sorry Insurance Bureau of Heilongjiang, I think it's called Province and the Key. We can see the roadmap as well. Now there isn't any information here. These are all the parts that they have worked on so far. And of course, December 2016, which is next month, is when they're going to launch BDMI's mainnet. Now I have found out recently from their Telegram page that uh, actually they're not going to launch on their own blockchain as they initially wanted. So they're going to stay on NEO. They are going to stay on the NEO blockchain. And I'll explain that in a moment because they do have actually a partnership with NEO and Ontology, of course. You, um, you, I'm sure you're very familiar with these two projects. Now, the team. So we can see Catherine Lee, she's the CEO. She's a, she's a response she's responsible for policy making and implementation of the project of course you can access her LinkedIn page if you're interested you've got the president Ken Huang you've got the chief technology officer and many more people now the strategic partners neo of course then you've got China Unicorn which is one of the leading telecommunication operators in China you've got Tsinghua Unigroup, which is the world leading chip manufacturing and cloud computing service. And you've got Tembusu Partners, which is a leading private equity firm which specializes in growth capital and mezzanine investments. You've got more people here, you've got uh, more companies, you've got Pinsent Masons, Milpay, haven't heard about them, international law firm ranking among the top 100 law firms in the world by turnover. So yeah, quite a lot. Of course, you've got the consultants and the advisors. Roger Lim, he's quite uh, known in the in the neo neo space. We have seen him as an advisor for other projects in the neo blockchain. Uh, you've got Kyungi Chen as well, founder of Zen IP. And there are some videos that you can watch if you're interested. They uh, they have a YouTube page as well. They do upload from time to time. Not many videos, but they they do have some. This is their latest video here which shows how the identity verification is going to work. And of course, you've got some media reports. Now, let's go into some of the details. Now, what is the key and what problems does the key solve? So I'm just going to reiterate what we've already read, just so you can get this very clear. So the key project is now developing a second generation IDV solution for the internet via BDMI technology. Now BDMI stands for Blockchain Based Dynamic Multi-Dimension Identification Technology. Such a solution perfectly echoes the main requirements for identifying each other in the digital world, which is the key for migrating people from the real world to the online world. Okay, so what's your advantage compared to other IDV solutions such as Civic? Okay, so they're talking about the competition. Compared to other peers in the IDV industry who are also applying IDV into blockchain, BDMI has the following three advantages. More reliable results, though the supporting data is gathered in real time, is comprehensive, is accurate, and is reliable. The data is also validated in advance by government agencies or other public institutions. It's of course lower cost, so full use of existing data sources, avoidance of duplicate work for data collection, processing, and authentication, and it's got a better user experience. Like I was mentioned at the beginning, it's not necessary for individual users to install any application or upload any information. And what's the use of TKY? Now, that the key ecosystem will be a decentralized autonomy community which will consist of three components of participants the validator the service the provider and the individual users and i'm going to show you that when we get to the white paper I've, they've got a really nice diagram there which i'm going to look at so it'll be very clear for you to understand what they're actually trying to achieve i mean the bigger picture is just is just great now smart contracts and tki tokens the the key token the tky token as a major component of the ecosystem is the only method to settle smart contracts signed between the participants in the key ecosystem. Since every aspect of life is in need of identity verification, like security check, access permission, medical treatment and shopping, etc. The utility of TKY token will be extremely high. 
Now, why did the key cooperate with NEO? This is another interesting one. So NEO provides technical support to the key. The smart economy NEO put forward is comprised of digital assets, smart contract, and digital identity, which is an entire ecosystem. Digital identity is an indispensable element of the NEO smart economy. The key shared the consensus with this idea and is willing to provide digital identity application for the NEO ecosystem. In order to co-establish the digital identity system together with NEO, we're also happy to provide more digital identity applications on NEO in the future. So that answers that question. And another interesting one is, can you explain the link between the key ontology and NEO ID? Now, since NEO is one of the early investors of the key, naturally the key is a partner of the ontology network. Now, ontology focuses on cross-chain solutions, but the key will focus on the identity verification and serve as the underlying layer of the ontology. This is really, really good, okay? These are all working together, all these three projects. Now, we will together serve the same objective, to develop bilateral or multilateral trust in the digital world. NEO ID is, a one type, uh, is one type of protocol of NEP5. The key is a DAP following the NEP5 protocol. NEO ID is not in competition with the key, okay? They are all together. Now, let's look at the white paper. So, I'm not actually going to go through all the details in the white paper. Feel free to do so yourself. It's available on their website. But I wanted to cover this specific diagram, which pretty much explains to you how the key will work. So, we can see this is yourself. You're the person. And if you go, for example, um, I don't know, say you want to go to the doctor, they'll have your information in the medical health database, right? Of course, you've got the public security database. You've also got the social database, the insurance database. If you've got a car or, I don't know, some health insurance, telecommunication database for your telephones, civil affairs database, and other identity. That then goes to the smart contract, the identity data block. And, of course, when you go to the hospital to purchase drugs, make payments, uh, I don't know, request some credit or whatever reason, you can go through the authorization, through the inspection and the token sent settlement, right? These are important aspects. So this pretty much explains how it's going to work. It all comes from you. It goes to the database, to the smart contract, to the blockchain. They verify your identity and all these things are happening, right? All these processes that are that they're going through. So identity verification application, which is the authorization, the proof, and the permission, right? All three of these. And of course, the token is being used in the middle. The token is being used to generate this kind of data and this kind of transaction. So this is great. And of course, you can see here, they've got the generation, the acquisition, encryption, hash, authorization, decryption, etc. So yes, you do have all this information here. I just wanted to, to, to show you this diagram because, you know, it, it does uh, make you understand it better. It makes you understand how the IDV solution actually works. And let's cover some of the latest news from the key. So on the 20th of November, they said that they've done a significant progress, which is going to be released on the 30th of November. So that's in eight days. So following the MVP release on May 28, six months have passed. During this period, although we have suffered a lot as the whole industry is entering a downward spiral, we have achieved a great deal too. By winning the National Technology Innovation Award of 2018 Chinese Government's Information Product and launching the first ever research into social, social insurance blockchain applications with the Chinese government, among many others. As promised, I continue to follow the highest professional and ethical standards and run the project by the benchmarks, business fundamentals and successful criteria required for all publicly listed companies. Hereby, I'm proud to announce that we have achieved yet another significant progress and a progress report will be released on November 30th. Please do stay tuned. So yes, I am going to cover that when it comes to November 30th on this channel because we want to know what they're going to update us with, right? And also, some other news. Uh, the key have participated in the National GPO platform. This was posted yesterday. So it's a field study in Xiamen. So yeah, we can see they've done that. Here's the team here. And yeah, it was a field study. And then they're just telling us about the key once again. 
And finally, I just want to talk about their GitHub. Now, as you go to their GitHub, obviously, you're not going to see any too much information here. The last update is May 2018, and this is pretty obvious, right? They don't want to be public. They want to keep everything confidential because we're talking about government data. We're talking about China, right? We're talking about government data. They need to be confidential. They can't share this information on GitHub. So for obvious reasons, they're not on GitHub, right? I just want to say that. This is what you're going to see when you open their GitHub page. So yeah, just keep that in mind that when it comes to government data, you cannot be on GitHub. You cannot be open source pretty much. You cannot share your code with the rest of the community. So yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover in terms of the key. What do I personally think of this project? I think it's awesome. I think it's great. And uh, I think that they will actually succeed considering who they're working with. They're working with the Chinese government. They're working with all these institutions in China. I think they're going to succeed personally. I have seen some interviews from Catherine Lee. She's a really powerful woman. She's, she's a real fighter in this space and she's really trying to achieve. I think this is very important when we see this kind of progress. So yes, let's keep an eye out and I'll update you on them. If you're new to my channel, I'd like to say please subscribe to my videos. Please subscribe to my channel. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. If you have any sort of questions, please leave a comment below the video. And I'll see you in my next video. Have a lovely day. Please take care of yourselves. Goodbye.